This is a Welcome to the BS3 Sports Show. Happy Friday to everyone out there. Welcome to NFL 100. Preseason started last night, so we got our first taste of the NFL. We got our first taste of some games. So, man, we got a we got a lot to be excited about, especially if we're if we're a football fan, which a lot of us are. We got a lot to be excited about. So we got NFL starting up. First game was last night. We'll be recapping the weekend sports from this week. We also talk about MLB trade deadline that went down and much more. So thank you guys for tuning in. Shout out to Sid Galloway in the building first. Also shout out to Raider Kev in the building. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. But let's talk about this this NFL game from yesterday. Also, shout out to Miss Mocha Bella. Thank you for tuning in. But one one major story from yesterday was the Broncos coach Vic Fangio. This was his first game with the Broncos, and the guy had a kidney stone, but he still showed up and still coached the game. Uh, that's that's crazy. I don't know if I could say that I could do the same thing. Having a knee stone and then showing back up and coaching like nothing ever happened. So a huge shout out to him for stepping on that field regardless, no matter what. Even I'm sure he was probably in pain. I'm sure he had you know, concerns and, and issues and feelings he wasn't feeling comfortable but in this opener the Hall of Fame game the Atlanta Falcons lose 14 to 10 to the Denver Broncos the first touchdown of the year was scored by Kalfani Muhammad on a three yard run and Muhammad had a pretty good game I didn't watch the game uh, but just looking up the stats, he had a pretty good game. Shout out to Mo Cheese in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Fish and Grits will be coming up next on the network right after this show. So make sure to keep it locked right here on xsquadradio.com. But you starting off this starting off this preseason. It brings back that excitement. You know, we've been having the dog days of of summer. You know, we still Major League Baseball going. We got NBA news that's been going on. But right now, we can look forward to the season. We got our training camps going on. We're going to have some cap casualties like we do. Um, also, it was the first, the very first pass interference review. 
So Denver challenged the 43-yard pass interference late in the second quarter, the first time ever, and the penalty stood under review. And I think this is good. I think this is well needed. I think this is very important because without without this review, we have a lot of mistakes. And we, you know, we're we're all yelling at the TV. We're all trying to figure out what happened. We all know that the that, that there was a bad call made. But it's almost like refs don't fully know that that was a bad call. Or they don't want to review it. So now, at this point, we can finally say that there is a review that is in place. I think it's a great idea. I'm excited about it. I think that will, that will furthermore help a lot of issues and a lot of potential missed calls. So I think it definitely is needed. And you're tuned into the BS3 Sports Show right here on X Squad Radio. Uh, let me know if you guys are having any type of audio issues. If you can hear me clearly, or if it's, it's on my end, it sounds like it's cutting in and out, but it may not be like that on your end. But I think it's uh, it's much need, much needed, especially if you think about Saints fans. You think about how they feel right about now. Uh, shout out to my man Kev Clutch Talk, who should be enjoying Jamaica right now. I don't know if you're back in town, but you should be enjoying Jamaica right now. Uh, also, the phone lines are open four six nine three five one zero eight eight one. Call in, give me your quick thoughts and comments. You know, we got an hour show. But when you think of the last year and the way it ended for the Saints, they have to be uh, upset, but I guess you got to be a little bit thankful, a little bit grateful, even though it's not going to help you. And like I talked about on Monday, they are taking this to a whole nother level. And they're talking about Going to court, having Roger Goodell come to court, and it sounds like testify under oath. I mean, they look, nothing is going to change from this. I don't care how far you decide to go with this, nothing is going to change. Do you think the NFL is going to rescind the win or the, the loss that you had? What, what do you think exactly they're going to do? They're probably not even going to send you a fruit basket. They're not. They're not going to give you any type of due justice that you're looking for. They're not. So, sorry to say this, but Saints fans, you got to get over it. You got to move on with your life. It's a whole nother season, so you have to move on. You have to. You cannot continue to go into this next season thinking about what happened last season. I know you were close, and I 100% get that. But you got to move on. Speaking of Falcons, the Falcons want to make Julio Jones the highest paid wide receiver. Um, No surprise. No surprise at all. They have to say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, Michael Thomas just had a huge payday. They cannot allow Michael Thomas to be the highest paid wide receiver I don't think he's the best wide receiver in the game I believe truly believe that it's Julio Jones shout out to Jay Fish in the building like I said Fish and Grits coming up next but when it comes to Julio when it comes to Julio he's going to get his money he has to it's it's mandatory so it's mandatory that he gets his money. So the GM has to say that. Uh, shout out to Lafay T. Thank you for tuning in. The GM has to say that he wants Julio to be the highest paid. Uh, to me, that, I'm not shocked that he said that. He has to say that because he knows who Julio is and who he is for this team. But when it comes to it, at the end of the day, you still have Matty... Luke Warren throwing the ball. 
Shout out to Melvin in the building. But you still have, I'm not going to call him Matty Ice, because to me he's not Matty Ice. So that's why I call him Matty Lukewarm. He will still have to be the one throwing the ball. So either way it goes, we'll see what happens. And Julio is definitely worth the money. But he is going to be the highest paid at this point. And this is a this is an ongoing thing that will I don't think will ever go away. Because there's going to be a guy that's going to be the highest paid next year. There's going to be a guy that's going to be the high, highest paid the year after that. You're going to have highest paid players year after year after year. That's just... That's that's the way it is, and no player wants to be uh, wants to be lower than the other. But the way I think this is gonna go, Julio's definitely gonna get his money. He's gonna get his money, uh, and, and God forbid if it's not with Atlanta, it'll be somewhere else. Easy. It'll be easy elsewhere. So, that's what's going on with the Falcons. On the flip side, the Broncos signed Theo Reddick. Theo Reddick, former Lion running back, is now a member of the Broncos. He got released. So, he's got a new team that he's going to be playing on. I think he'll be a very good addition. I mean, when it comes down to it, you want... Flexibility with your running back camp, your running back committee, and it's the beginning of camp. So I, I like to pick up too, Fish. I like to pick up. And you, you need the guy in camp, number one. And two, he, he's been productive. He's been productive. Uh, that That is one thing you can say about Theoretic. He's been productive. No, he's not the best running back in the league, but he has a niche and he'll be able to help these Broncos I believe. I don't think his career is over. And I don't think his time is up. And Fish has Falcons 0-1. Yes. You got to say that. They are. It's the preseason, though. We all know preseason means a whole lot of nothing. Now, it is good. If you're a fan of your team, you definitely want to see your team and see who they're going to pick up, who they're going to cut. So, we'll see what happens there. But like I said, Theo Reddick signing on with the Broncos. I think that's a great addition. Um, a little bit of sad news. Rest in peace to Pro Football Hall of Fame middle linebacker Nick Bonaconti. He was an undersized linebacker who helped the Miami Dolphins to the only NFL perfect season. He died at 78. Rest in peace to him. We got five preseason games, and our backup QB looked pretty good, says Mo Cheese. Falcons plus two and lose at the end. Typical Mo. <laughs> also, phone lines are open for some quick comments, 469-351-0881. Give me your thoughts and comments. How you feeling? Happy Friday. Right here on the BS3 Sports Show. Michael Thomas, five years and a hundred million dollar extension, sixty one million guaranteed. I think he, I think he deserves it. Uh, shout out to DJ Hammer in the building, MCDE. Thank you for tuning in. I think he deserves it. Uh, he has shown that he is one of the top wide receivers in the game. Possibly a little bit overpaid, but at this point, in the way the NFL is, there's there's there is a such thing as overpaid, but it's all what the market is. And if the market dictates this guy should get paid than this other guy, somebody's gonna eventually pay it, and that's what it comes down to. So Michael Thomas getting paid. And in my opinion, I really was was thinking, thinking that the the Falcons should have set the bar 
they should